our meeting number 304. Oh, let's listen to the club. <laughs> to the see a few newcomers, new guests, so I'm going to say something about a little bit about Toastmasters as a system. So Toastmasters International is a worldwide network of clubs that provide fun and friendly environment, learning environment, where we can improve our communication and uh, leadership skills, we can gain self-confidence, we can learn how to set goals, how to manage our time, how to track our progress. And also, I always added, we can learn how to be a better person, not only a better speaker, right? And for me, for example, Toastmasters is about people. I love this wonderful community. Founded in 1924, so this year we are going to celebrate 100th anniversary. Can you imagine? It's great, right? Yeah. It will be a big celebration, I believe. Uh, now we are approximately 270,000 members in 148 countries. Can you imagine? So it's a really great community where you can not just learn something, Basically, uh, you can do whatever you want, <laughs> but uh, also you can have fun and make friends. And before uh, we move to our main agenda, uh, today, by the way, we have not usual meeting. It will be unusual a little bit. It will be combined two parts, one general meeting and the, uh, another part It's voting. So we are going to have an election today, so it's very interesting. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to finish up my way here as, a, as an officer. Uh, so before to move and introduce our Toastmaster of the Day, uh, we have a tradition here. All newcomers will ask on stage and introduce yourself by saying your name, why you're here, and what is your expectation, or whatever you want us. So you already start coming here, guys. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. from my colleague, Tatiana, and I'm very interested, uh, my goal is to practice, uh, first goal is to practice English, the second goal is to uh, in, in, uh, strengthen my public uh, skills and public, uh, public spe uh, spe uh, speech, yeah, because uh, I work in Herbalife and I'm responsible for a uh, big uh, Baltic market, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, <laughs> so I have to go to the stage in July. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, give some speech to the audit, uh, uh, audience for 400 people. So actually, I had that experience, but it was uh, in uh, 2018, and after COVID, we had Zoom sessions, etc., etc. Uh, during uh, this, uh, <laughs> okay, during this uh, TV, uh, yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, meeting, yeah. So, and I lost actually this uh, this, uh, this skill. So, two main goals to encourage my. Uh, public speaking and uh, in, in improve my English. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so do I have to say so so many information? <laughs> <laughs> I know that you, you asked a couple yeah. of words. Whatever you okay. want us to know about. Okay, you. my name is Vlad Sifurin. Uh, my first time here. And uh, two hours ago, I just found some information and that is... Uh, <laughs> 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 
public speaking, then I hope they think that okay, you can you can come to to, 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 to today's meetings. I said okay, no problem. So that is why uh, everything is very fast. So that is why if I'm talking about my goals, objectives, I would say that it's a public speaking, communication skills, and uh, I trying to improve my cross-cultural communication as well. I know that uh, your club, this club, uh, is international, that is why maybe I will have a chance to practice and uh, to speak with people with other countries as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. the second question? <laughs> <laughs> what about my... Okay. So, you can see Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you Thank you so much. We we'll also know how to overcome fear, fear of public speaking, speaking in front of the audience. It's the main goal also for Google's, for example. So, uh, and before we move to the main um, part of our meeting, I would like to say, I should say, that please check your phone um, and put it on a silent mode in order not to distract our dear speakers today and also if you don't want to be photographed please report it now otherwise we are going to right, uh, to uh, take photos and make videos during our session what else i should say uh, probably uh, we are trying here to avoid some topics uh, related to sex to and also some gender, gender differences and religious. So try to avoid in order to again don't hurt some people's feelings. And now I'm happy to introduce our Toastmaster of the day and you know, ask her to come on stage, even in Ottawa, please. Dear fellow Toastmasters and guests, good evening. What you don't choose, you lose. Sorry, sorry, I, I need to correct myself from the beginning and uh, to add the word may in this expression. Uh, what you don't choose, you may lose. I think it sounds more friendly. It is like an atmosphere we created here in this place at our meetings. Uh, and our meetings is always, uh, are always friendly and engaging. And I have, as usual, one question to you. Who creates such an atmosphere here? Hello. You, just you. <laughs> <laughs> just and you. <laughs> and you. All, all of us, we gather together in two weeks and promote and uh, Person uh, promote our personal growth and uh, uh, work on our personal growth. And if you don't choose to actively participate in Toastmasters activities, such as meetings or meeting organizers, you may lose your chance to boost your confidence, to overcome your fear of public speaking, and maybe to become more effective communicator. And to become more punctual, because punctuality is a basic foundation, foundation for everything, to start on time, to speak within your allotted time slots. Uh, that, that things make our meetings more dynamic and vital. Oh, okay, I stop taste your passion and welcome to this stage, just timer, timer of this meeting today. Татьяна Владимировна. Президент of my role for tonight. Yeah. Youth is wasted on the young. This is a short but very precise English proverb which shows how we sometimes very unwise lose our time. And to do, do not lose our time, I offer you to choose good time management and that, that is exactly what's my role tonight so I have these uh, signals for you guys basically we today have 
tonight we have only prepared speeches and we have a table topic sessions. So for the prepared speeches, the speakers, when I show you green signal, that means you reached your minimum, which is five minutes. When you reach six minutes, I will show you yellow. And when you are, when I show you green, that means you reached maximum and you have to wrap, you have to finish basically your speech by the red signals. But I'm not going to, <sighs> I'm not going to take this signal off until you finish. For the table topic sessions, for each speaker, we have one minute minimum. I show you green signal. When you reach one minute and a half, it's going to be yellow signal. And when you have to finish your speech and you reach two minutes, red signal will be shown. Good luck, you guys. Good luck. Thank you, Tatiana. Time management is a very, very good tool uh, to learn uh, um, and to, to, for learning and for personal growth. Uh, as Toastmaster of the day, uh, since newcomers are here, uh, I need to tell you that our meeting consists uh, of four parts today. The first part is a session of prepared speeches. The second part is about table topic session, uh, where uh, you, all of you can uh, skyrocket your skills in impromptu speeches right here, right now. And uh, the third part is about evaluation uh, and the most dynamic, most engaging part is the election of executing committee for the next Toastmaster year. Okay, long story short, I uh, see um, how you are ready to lend your ears to our speaker, Alexander Baran. Alexander Baran, please wait, 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 one sec, one sec, one sec. <laughs> Such a protocol, I, I need to announce your uh, Project. Uh, Alexander Baranov is on the first level, uh, presentation mastery. He works on project introduction to vocal variety and body language. And the title of his speech, Past, Present and Future, three in one. Alexander Baranov, welcome on stage. I want to talk to you and think together with you on present, past, and the future today. Actually, when I prepared this speech and thought about these time frames or dimensions, as it come to me, as it came to me, uh, this is quite usual that we say past and future. Maybe because it's some something cultural, because we write from left to right, or if we look uh, on videos. On YouTube, you have uh, some frame, and there is a scroller, and it shows where is past, where is future, which is not looked at yet, and there is uh, the small amount of now, of the present, uh, and when you pause, for example, uh, on the video, or the connection of the internet is bad, usually it pauses itself, and there is some something like this, um, and this is a very interesting moment. What is now? Because past is quite understandable, future, I think, as well. So let's think, what is the past? How do you understand it? You may shout out. Your experience. No experience. Memories. What? Memories. Right, so it's some information and some memories which we received back in our life. Uh, and you're a scientist, Russian um, famous neuroscientist Tatiana Chernikovskaya, you may have looked at her videos on the internet, she says that all the information which our brain receives throughout the life of a person is getting there and no, uh, nowhere, uh, never leaves the brain. So you receive and keep all the information you have. So this is our brain and our memory as a large storage where files of information come in, are systematized in a certain way, and are there, and it may be revived to life at any moment. I need a volunteer who is going to talk to me for half a minute. Are you ready? Okay. I'm not. You can sit on your chair. Oh. Um, 
could you tell me about your past, your immediate past? <laughs> <laughs> For instance, did you, did you have lunch today? Uh, yes, of course. And what did you have for lunch? Uh, I had okay, for lunch, uh, yogurt, and um, some uh, nuts. And did you like it? Yeah, absolutely. It's really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> did you have lunch with somebody or alone? Uh, no, with somebody. Not alone. Okay. Did you <laughs> did you communicate with this person? Absolutely. Yeah. And was it pleasant for you? Absolutely. Okay. Um, it looks like you're so concentrated now that you're getting out of your memory some image which has certain details which you want to remember if I ask you a question, then you won't fail. Uh, do you have this image right now in your head? Yes, absolutely. So this is interesting when I thought about it, that if we revive our memories from the past, actually we have it right now in our head. So our past is actually our now and our present. And an interesting thought which I read is that um, and I think you could also agree with this, that our past cannot be changed. Uh, I thought that this is true all my life, and I read some experiment uh, by the scientists, by neuroscientists, which is uh, quite um, modern. They took photos from the childhood of a person, they amended some details in this photo, but in such a way that uh, it still looked authentic for the person and didn't, uh, the person didn't notice it. And they had an interview with the person, they showed the picture and actually they tried to um, take uh, certain information from the person about the childhood and also uh, put some new information in. And this person took it as granted. In fact, the, the past which the person had it in, uh, in, its, in her or his mind uh, was easily changed by new information which was uh, quite credible. So we can, by this experiment, see that actually in the current moment, in the now, we can change, in fact, the past of a person. Is it the same way with the future? Is it easy or not? What do you think about the future? What is it? How do you define it? It's a mystery. <laughs> mystery. It's always a mystery. So could uh, anybody talk to me with uh, about the future? I can talk. Okay. Uh, what is your future as you imagine it for the coming hour? <laughs> for the coming hour? <laughs> what will you be doing? I'm going to be here. Here? Doing what? the evaluation of your project. <laughs> <laughs> and if, for instance, I, I felt ill, or the electricity in the building is over, or the building is, uh, there is a storm outside, or something happens... I will still be evaluating your project. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I'm not here. Uh, the important thing here is that it is your expectation, because you base it on certain facts. The fact that I'm here, the fact that you have have your role, that you are a person who is responsible, and you will be doing this. But actually, something can change your future. And during the time we discussed the future which you imagined, you still had a picture in your mind. And this picture was in your mind right now and here. So in the current moment. It's not something which is somewhere, we don't know where. Yeah? And this is also an interesting thing, that the future is life for us. And it is here and now and with us together, right at the same moment. What is now then? For me, the past is quite unlimited. We don't know when this universe emerged, so it's unlimited time. We don't know when it will be over, so future is also unlimited. But the now is some minor moment. It is the glue between these two big periods of time. But this glue builds up a large part of our life. It encompasses our emotions, what I can see, what I can hear, all our senses. Um, I can smell food, 
and immediately I have images of the food, I have some ideas, a joke comes to my mind and I want to tell it to my friend immediately because I'm arrogant. And also this current moment and now encompasses all our thoughts about the past which we revive in our memory and all of our thoughts about the future if we have grounds to believe that the future will be in some way as we imagine it or if we have some fears about the future, even ungrounded. And this is our choice and your choice personally, which of you, what will be your moment of now filled with. And actually, I don't think that it is important to somehow to define or to measure the now moment. You just need to be now, and this is the 100% of success. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> back, 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 to, back to track. <laughs> Sorry. So back to track and back to topic. Oh my God, I, I have headache even after your speech. Since we have election today, uh, of course. <laughs> I want to touch, uh, the, to, to touch leadership opportunities uh, of leadership roles at Toastmaster Executive Committee. Uh, if you don't choose uh, to take a leadership role within Toastmasters, such as uh, serving as a club officer in club meeting organizers or other activities, you may miss the valuable experience to enhance your leadership skills. And on this note, uh, I would like to present, represent the second speaker of our today's meeting, uh, Samira Dasta. She uh, nominates uh, to executive committee, but we will back to this issue a little bit later. And now, uh, today, Samira uh, presents her project, uh, which titled The Effective Project Prepare for the Interview, and the title of her speech, Interview for a Medical Affairs Role. It's okay, you don't have to get up. It's all right. Please, Please stay well done, <laughs> Samira. <laughs> Today we are going to conduct a role play interview to demonstrate the skills and techniques required for a successful job interview. And our scenario today involves um, a candidate interviewing for the position of medical advisor in oncology at Johnson and Johnson. And the interview will be Alexander Uzianov. A seasoned professional with over 10 years of experience in major pharmaceutical companies, currently acting as a medical uh, director at Johnson & Johnson. Stop. Two, two seconds. My client, English, is Gulnara. She's a compliance lawyer for Johnson & Johnson. I'm going to, eat, to record it. <laughs> Samira, thank you for joining us today. Let's start with a brief introduction. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yes, thank you for the invitation to the interview. Uh, my name is Samira and I'm very motivated and results-oriented professional uh, with a background in pharmaceutical um, uh, sciences and extensive research and industry experience. My career journey began with a major in uh, pharmacy. Uh, which gave me a solid understanding of drug mechanisms and therapeutic areas. And over the past years, I have focused on developing expertise uh, in oncology therapeutic area. Uh, during my uh, previous work at the Post Engine, I curated a comprehensive uh, database that organized structured information from scientific articles. And this uh, meticulous process required attention to detail and uh, very good understanding of um, uh, clinical trials. 
in order to help uh, oncologists to make informed uh, treatment decisions based on robust data sets. I also excelled in collaborating with diverse teams, including uh, uh, oncologists, and uh, this helped me to improve my teamwork and communication skills that are essential for effective engagement with uh, healthcare professionals. Currently, as analyst, uh, I work at a different organization where I foster cross-functional collaboration across uh, different departments to align uh, digital uh, uh, platform development uh, with um, uh, specific scientific and operational uh, needs. Okay, clear. <laughs> Great experience, but why do you want this job? Yeah, I'm really motivated to join um, your company uh, because of its commitment to patients employees and the broader community and this uh, philosophy deeply resonates with my personal and professional values and uh, aligns perfectly with my career aspirations. Uh, companies focus on high quality products and uh, services is very inspiring and I can say that throughout my career I always tried to dedicate myself to um, uh, provide um, uh, data and insights to improve uh, patient outcomes and uh, moreover I am really impressed by uh, research and the development initiatives of the company especially in the area of oncology. Mm, we have a lot of strength but why are you leaving here? Um, I would like to uh, switch to uh, pharmaceutical industry uh, because um, I want to use my analytical skills uh, in the uh, different uh, setting that directly influences um, uh, new treatment options and as a consequence um, improve uh, patient uh, outcomes. It looks terrific. <laughs> but what do you consider to be your greatest weakness? Mm, one area that I'm uh, working on is um, uh, I, I'm working on to improve is uh, my attention uh, to details. I like to deeply delve into the details and. Uh, um, of course, it was uh, helping to ensure the uh, quality of the data that I was analyzing, but sometimes it could slow um, the uh, workflow. And to overcome and manage uh, this, I started setting more structured milestones uh, and uh, set clear goals, which uh, helped me to improve my productivity and uh, efficiency without compromising the quality of the work. Well, Samira, your weakness looks like your strength. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you deal with stressful situation? Uh, okay, uh, I have uh, uh, the a situation when I was given a project with a tight uh, deadline. Uh, I had to uh, lead and create uh, the onboarding uh, course uh, for um, new hires. Uh, so to um, accomplish the project on time, I uh, broke it into several uh, manageable uh, tasks. I also took part in regular meetings uh, with the team uh, to uh, gather feedback and um, to foster open communication so that everyone in the team will be uh, aligned and motivated uh, and uh, uh, to prevent uh, burnout and to stay focused I uh, implemented short breaks and this uh, really improved my productivity 
and uh, overall it helped me to accomplish, accomplish the project uh, on time uh, and um, Yes, uh, yes, it's a complete accomplished project on time and uh, deliver good results. Samira, you are ideal candidate. Uh, what can you do for us? <laughs> Someone what else can. What is going on? Uh, first of all, uh, I'm the person who respects boundaries and I hope that my boundaries will be respected as well. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, but most importantly, I have um, uh, vast experience in analyzing scientific uh, data and um, translating complex information into insights for apologists, and I believe that uh, this experience would be very valuable in a medical advisor role. Mm, I see well, information is true, and you are really can manage stress. One question. Where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> uh, in five years I aspire to a transition to a medical uh, manager role uh, and have more uh, leadership position uh, and I also um, I would like to work more with international teams uh, so that I can use uh, my English language skills uh, on a daily uh, basis um, and I hope that I will be able to lead to initiative and uh, mentor uh, my team more effectively. Great, Samira, thank you very much for sharing your insights. We will review all the candidates and revert to you with our decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Much uh, so, uh, Toastmaster stage is a really, really good place for rehearsal. So, welcome and rehearse your interviews, rehearse your speeches, and enjoy uh, learning. And this is the end of the first part of prepared speeches uh, session. And we, uh, without the break, we, we move on to table topic session. Before I welcome the stage the topic, table topic master uh, i would like to say a couple of words about uh, table topic master actually nikolai marchenkov uh, based on my uh, personal observation nikolai has chosen to build connection with different clubs i have met him in different clubs meeting of our neighbors and uh, he uses, perfectly uses his chance to expand his professional networks and learn from others. I think uh, if we compare, Nikolai sounds more professional than one year ago. So, Nikolai, welcome on stage. Your stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, I'm today your Topics master, uh, let me first tell you um, about what table topic session is. It's actually the session of uh, small speeches. Each of you has a chance to grab the opportunity and tell us uh, and give us your impromptu speech. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, you can uh, choose the speech um, out of this uh, number of speeches which I have prepared. So you just go here on stage and grab one of these papers and read it out loud and, out loud and then uh, start uh, uh, your speech. You have 30 seconds to prepare your speech, so you don't have to, uh, to do it uh, right away. Just uh, use this time, think about it and then start. Uh, as uh, our timer said, each speech is from one to two minutes. Uh, the minimum is one minute. Uh, the, the upper boundary is uh, two minutes. And what else? Uh, yes, I would also like to invite you to uh, tell us your name, because 
Uh, will we have later the table topics uh, contest? I think. I think so. Yes. Table top, uh, the voting for table topics uh, winner. Is it yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. And, what, what else? and I think we don't have the word of the day, so we don't use this one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start. Uh, any volunteer? Maybe some some experienced Toastmaster first uh, to set an example, and later on we can uh, proceed with uh, newcomers as well. To me. To me. Don't be shy. Sorry, I don't know your name. I surrender. You don't know my name, Michael. <laughs> Seriously, don't be shy. So, Michael, make your uh, choice. I so I'm getting very old. Put my glasses on. How many you got? <laughs> there are ten. Oh, ten. Yeah, let's go for the middle. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. Okay. 30 seconds. My table topics for today is would I rather? Yes, I will join you for dinner tomorrow. <laughs> have the power to read people's minds or would I rather have the power to? I'm sorry, it was the wrong meshed restaurant. It was a terrible meal. I apologize to see into the future. Well, to be honest with you, both have their benefits. But for me, the power to read somebody's mind would be horrendous. I would rather have the power to see into the future. Because imagine that I'm standing here now and I'm listening to every single thing that you are saying about me. Yes, of course I'm good looking. I know I have an ego, I'm sorry. But this would be, for me, a very, very difficult world to live in. Can you imagine? You remember the movie with Jim Carrey when he could hear everybody's thoughts? It would be terrible. Life would be a mess. So for me, I would much rather be able to see into the future because then I would know if I got the job or not. <laughs> and whereas you would know if she would take your hand when you're interviewing <laughs> and you would know not to get rebuttaled. So yes, so for me, the most important thing would be to see into the future. And then I will know whether or not you will vote for me to be the table topics winner. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That was a good one. So that was a great speech, and uh, I would propose that the newcomers don't feel intimidated uh, to come on stage after this. Uh, uh, after so, uh, good example. Go, okay. Good example. That's a great example. That's, that was a great speech. We don't always have such speeches. Uh, <laughs> second time. Second time. Second time. So maybe you try. All the topics are quite simple. <laughs> Choice. Uh, by the way, what is the name? Uh, I feel it, sorry. My bad. If you could, uh, so I should uh, first uh, pronounce yes. the topic. Yes, yeah? yes. If you could choose between being a famous celebrity or respected leader, which would you choose and why? So, by no means, I would choose to be a respected leader. By no means, because sir, it depends on my humanity on my mood, on my, uh, uh, <clears throat> so, <laughs> so just to practice my English, yeah, uh, on my just essence of key, in my, of, my, of my heart and my soul. So being uh, a respected leader, uh, it means that you are respected and the respectfulness depends on uh, your team, on uh, your uh, people, on your colleagues, etc., etc. It means that you are respected. So you need to deserve respectfulness, yes? And uh, you should do some things to deserve it. So being respected is much more better than being a good and famous celebrity. It's funny, yeah. <laughs> Next, next we have eight topics left, so 
So great chance for everyone, almost for everyone to uh, come here and pronounce his question. Maybe? Yeah, why, why only newcomers? Okay. Not only. <laughs> no, not only. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm would you rather have the ability to never kill fear or never feel sadness? Which would you choose and uh, how would it impact your life? So 30 seconds. Joseph. Yeah, it's a very difficult question. Never feel fear or never feel sadness. Okay, let's think about it. Never feel fear. What does it mean fear? So it means that you... Afraid something. Afraid something uh, which is not known for you, which is could be dangerous for you. And uh, if you will not fear, uh, feel uh, this, kind of uh, feeling, uh, what it will help you, how, how it will help you, what will be advantages of that? I think uh, you, your life will be dangerous, you will potentially put uh, loss um, or danger, life or danger, you, you could be danger, uh, <clears throat> you could be um, so your life will be under uh, hazardous situations, I would say. So what doesn't mean never feel sadness? Sadness, I think it will be a little bit related not to your life, it will be related to your uh, social uh, circumstance. I mean, it's an interaction with the people. When you feel uh, sadness, when you're doing something which is not acceptable in the society yeah, and uh, you have uh, some fear that somebody will, um, how to say, uh, will negatively accept it. So I would say that uh, I would choose, but in another hand, what doesn't mean uh, to not to feel uh, Sadness, it means that you could potentially lose any contact with the people in society. So, I mean, it's a, a worst case when you, you would say, I would say, when you, you, you are creating something which is not acceptable in the, your society, and so it means that you will be isolated. And uh, so, I think they have an equal. Um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> equal, equal situation. I wouldn't choose any of them because, you know, uh, feel free, you will potentially, there is some potential <clears throat> uh, risk that you will lose life. Uh, if you will not feel sadness, you can potentially lose society. So it will be like a small day. Sorry for my speech. <laughs> So maybe, yes, uh, maybe some of our uh, online uh, Toastmasters would like to make a speech. Uh, oh, yeah, George. George? Yes. Miles, yes. I, I think Miles, Miles, would you like to make a speech? Yes, I will. Just, uh, I'm going to change to my earbuds. One moment, please. Okay, that's I have better quality sound now. All right. Who's uh, readings? So you hear me? Yes, yes, uh, and quite well. Uh, Miles, we have uh, left uh, the topics number one, three, four, five, six, and ten. Number three, three okay. please. Miles, imagine you could you could choose one superpower, flight or invisibility. Which would you choose and how would you use it? 
Mr. Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests, flight or invisibility? Well, I will choose flight because I would really love to fly over to Moscow to visit yeah. you because I'm here in Canada and right now I'm participating from here's a clue what's that <laughs> look like <laughs> i'm in a hospital room right now and i'm going to have a procedure where they're going to give me a brand new immune system delete my immune system give me new stem cells and then i should be good as gold and with my superpower of flight i would fly over to participate in a Toastmasters, Toastbusters meeting with you guys because as much as it's wonderful to connect online with this marvelous technology, I would much rather be able to be right there at on occasion in person with you and also to participate in the wonderful after parties that you have at local pubs and restaurants when the meeting is over. So um, look forward to the day with my superpower. I'll fly over and be there to have a beer or a glass of wine with you. Mr. Oh. Tabletop. Oh. Master. Oh. Thank you, Miles. Well, great. Um, someone else who wants, please. Number five, I thought about number five. Okay. <laughs> you have the chance to go back in time and change one decision in your life. What would you choose to change and why? This question, question is not new for me. I thought about this a couple of times in my life. Uh, and in fact, I already knew the answer then and decided that I wouldn't change anything. Uh, I had different happenings in my life and different occasions. Some of them were, were traumatic, some of them were quite happy. But I think that all the experience which we receive in our lives is important and make us the person which we are now. And I'm happy with the person I am now. Maybe I could change anything in me, in my abilities, but this is some look to the future where I can do it myself from the state of mind where I can control what I am and not thinking about what already passed. So I'm happy about what happened to me in my life and uh, I appreciate it very much. I don't know what would be changed in my life when something, you know, like in the movies, when you go back in time and change something, then uh, not only your ability changes and your, your state of mind changes, but the whole world may change. And you don't know and you cannot expect what would be the, the uh, consequences of your change. So I don't want to get all the world in danger. <laughs> uh, I think I'm done with this. Thank you. You've been watching way too many Avengers movies. <laughs> we still, we still have uh, four topics. So maybe ladies first, and after after Valeria, I'll call you. I love being in Russia. Ladies always first. Yes. <laughs> we have no Christmas today. Do I get chocolate after? Christmas? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you could only eat one type of cuisine for the rest of your life, would you choose Italian, Mexican, or Well, this is an easy question because I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I think it's quite um, difficult to choose just one cuisine. But if that cuisine is already varied and there are a lot of options, 
For example, in Mexican cuisine, you have tacos, you have burritos, you have tamales. Are you hungry? <laughs> Are you yeah. salivating? Because I am. I think my, my uh, choice is very obvious. But also in Italian, you also have variety. Is it just pizza and pasta? No. So no. Am I. no. <laughs> I see you shaking your head. What else do you know from uh, Italian cuisine apart from pizza and pasta? I don't know how to say But I know that they have a very good uh, lasagna. Lasagna, yeah. So we've got some other options. I remember I was in Italy once and I tried a rabbit roulade. And that was an Italian dish. <laughs> rabbit roulade, you guys. Come on. Where are you going to find a rabbit roulade? So it really doesn't matter which cuisine you choose because if you just choose one, there is so much to explore in that one option. For me, it will be Mexican because I love Mexico. <laughs> um, but for anyone else, it doesn't matter what you choose because there is always, always more depth to explore. Yeah. And I'll give myself a chocolate. Always, <laughs> always inspiring speeches by Valeria. Please welcome. Oh, right. Hi everyone, my name is Anton, for those who don't know me. So, um, got a question number four. If you had to choose between always speaking your mind or never speaking again, which would you choose and why? Yeah, this is hard. Look, so, mm, Yeah, this is hard. What, <laughs> what, so, what, what, uh, you have 30 seconds this, you know, to think. You know. Okay, so. Um, definitely not gonna go with speaking out my mind because <laughs> you know as I'm a human so we have all lots of different ideas in your head and uh, just talking out loud everything you have in your head could be just uh, annoying to other people right so but if you have the ability to have those ideas in your head while not being able to speak them out that would be a better choice right because you can always write it down and then share it with others so, and you can choose what exactly you would like to uh, showcase to the world. Otherwise, you just be talking, maybe you have some secrets from another person and you will speak it out because you think about it and you have to say it out loud. So this is not the good option. And anyone who gets in this position, I suggest to choose, keep it quiet, say less, <laughs> even if it requires to say nothing at all. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you uh, everyone, I hope you have enjoyed the table for the session and uh, I, I want to pass the stage to our... Uh, um, Just pass it to the so time flies as a bonus and guys we are coming we to the wall. Ah, the best table for okay. Yes, exactly. Please uh, find the QR code on our agenda. You need QR code. And what for the best table topic, uh, table top topic speaker for today's meeting? Mm -hmm. I will wait. Okay. This is uh, evaluation session. Uh, this is extremely positive. 
uh, highly motivational and educational uh, session of our meeting. And the main people of this session are genuine evaluation, uh, evaluators. What I have to say about Valeria Khalatkova. Lera, we really missed you. We missed your drive. We missed your uh, enthusiasm. We missed your smile. We missed your speeches and missed your feedback. We all have something learned from you. We are all ears. I welcome to the stage you for evaluation, Alexander Baranovsky. Please go. When I heard the title of the speech, Past, Present, Future, Three in One, I thought it would be an easy story, like an instant coffee cup. Apparently, that was not that easy. What I witnessed is people's brain processing, and I heard this while you were talking, and my brain processed as well. That's a very interesting topic, Alexander, that you chose, and I want to thank you for this. I personally love the stories about time, past, present, future, how we connect things, how they are interconnected, how we can travel from the past to the future through the present. That's what we actually did tonight with your speech. Thank you for this wonderful, wonderful topic. What I also loved about your story is the dialogue with the audience. You interacted with us, you asked questions, you asked for the volunteers, we talked to you and that was confident and that was to the point, not too much. Speech in general, there is one thing that I would like to mention that you might want to challenge yourself for the future. I was seeking for the main message of your story. There were so many thoughts, let's think, I was thinking, lots of concepts united by this topic. But eventually, the main idea that you proposed is that the, the, the present moment is the success. That's the main message. If it is, that could probably be pronounced from the beginning to the end. So it would be a surprise by the end of the story. Now let's speak about the objectives of the project, which were actually body language and vocal variety. I don't have that much time to focus on both, so I would uh, stress more on the body language and comment on this, and then we can talk about vocal variety in person. What I liked about your, your body language here, the gestures, they, almost all of them, were purposeful. You used past, present, future. You actually used your hands, inviting people, getting answers from them, and the gestures supported the main message of the past, present, and future concepts throughout the whole speech. I also uh, like the movements on the stage, however, I would suggest that you use the stage horizontally. You can also use as writing from right to left, you can say past, present and future. Use the stage, it is yours. I would also suggest that you probably look a little more straightforward to people's eyes, like this, or like this, or like this. Not like this, or like this, as you did in your speech, sometimes. Probably fix your head and proceed with the speech. And then fix your eye on another person. That will help us to deliver, to, to, for you to deliver the message better and more effectively, and for us to digest the complex ideas that you have introduced. I also like the mimics, because you smiled. And you reacted on the content of your story. So, um, to sum it up, what I would suggest you for the next speeches, choose the great topics. That was, that was a wonderful choice. I really loved it. I appreciate this a lot. Use more eye contact, fix your head to different people, and use the stage more freely, because it is truly yours. Thank you very much for this wonderful story. Thank you, Valeria. I'm sorry, sorry, I always uh, trying to record your evaluation because it is like an uh, educational record. I will uh, download 
uh, upload it to our chat and people uh, use it for your learning because it is really structured and educational. Thank you, Valeria, very much again. Okay. Uh, we are... Um, and now I would like to invite to the stage Valeria, Valeria Pogarilova. Uh, Valeria has just come uh, back from Poland uh, from the international <laughs> speech contest. Yeah, one week ago. Yes, one week oh, ago. Okay, one week ago. Wow. Uh, sh I, 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 I believe, uh, I believe uh, uh, it was an unforgettable trip. I believe it was, you, you gained lots of experience and we, we want you share this experience in your future speeches. Welcome, Valeria Pogarelo. Thank you. Uh, in Samira's speech, you witnessed a, a unorthodox approach to speeches. By unorthodox, I mean not standard, because you saw two chairs and a role play of an interview. And what I found was very excellent, the way we were guided into what was about to happen. Samira introduced the situation, explained why the chairs are there, so we're not confused, we're not shocked, everybody knew what was happening and what was coming. So she managed the expectations of the audience very well. And I think we can all agree that Samira has a very good grasp of her skills and she's able to present them very well. She knows her strengths, her weaknesses, she's able to explain them very clearly and one of the criteria for this specific speech was to stay poised, which I think you successfully did. Almost too much. This brings <laughs> me on a point that you can improve because at, point, at times in your speech it felt like a rehearsed monologue. But the, I'm going to read this out, so, so we know the purpose. The purpose of this project is to practice the skills needed to present yourself in an interview. In an interview, we need people skills, as well as showing our hard skills, our technical knowledge. You also need to show that you are able to communicate. So for your future speeches and Honestly, I would really, really suggest to redo this one again, to take the opportunity to actually practice an interview, to look at Sasha or whoever you're speaking to, your interviewer, engage your interview as if it's a real situation and use filler language because to avoid it feeling like a monologue, by filler language, I don't mean uh, uh, mm, no, nothing like that, but that's a very interesting question, Alexander. Oh, honestly, in my experience, da -da 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 -da. so it doesn't feel rehearsed. So it feels natural. And you can show those people skills and practice them. This is a great opportunity to practice an interview and then you're ready for the real world. I mean, what else do I have to say? Oh, of course, the last one. I loved the joke you guys did about boundaries. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. I would love to see more of that because for me, that showed your personality. And if you could just play, play a little bit more, because this is the, this is what we're here for. This is why this club exists, is to be able to come here and not take it seriously, to play around, to practice. Okay. Lera, please don't hate me. I don't mean not take it seriously. Please take it seriously. <laughs> Toastmasters is amazing. I love this community. But enjoy being on stage and use this opportunity. Take advantage of this opportunity fully. Okay, I see the red. I'm going to quickly sum up. Great introduction. And uh, really good poise, but try to add a little bit more personality and filler language, like I explained. And we can talk more afterwards if you have any questions. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to pass it to this. VPPR for taking videos and pictures and Toastmaster of the day. 
Thank you, Valeria, for your constructive feedback. I feel I, I, I think it was uh, really useful for you, Samira, and you will take it into your consideration for preparation for the, your best interview in your life and get the best job in your life. Okay. This is the end of uh, our uh, uh, yes general part of our meeting before election. And uh, as usual, I would like to conclude. Uh, we considered uh, several examples of how the choice is important, uh, the right choice is important, and how it is not good to lose something, not interesting, not uh, uh, <coughs> suitable for you. And these examples highlight how making pro pro proactive choices <coughs> within the Toastmasters framework can lead to professional and personal growth and benefits, uh, while neglecting these opportunities may result in missing chances, ch chances for growth and uh, development. Thank you very much for your attention and for your active position and uh, participation in our activities and uh, move on to the next part. To the election. Now we have break. Yeah. Oh, ten minutes. Break. Make yeah. it five. We are behind. Ah, okay. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Timer. Real. To count this. Thank you so much. <laughs> Guys, we are going to start. Нет, Лера ушла куда -то. Вообще ушла? А как она ушла? Нам нужен кворум. Да будет без нее, нет? А кворум есть? Читайте, почитайте. Окей. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, guys, now, now we are going to have a very important part to of our meeting, actually election. For me, it's a relief. I am happy that next month we will have a new team and I'm going to you know, relax or something. I'm going to be division director, but anyway. Uh, so, I would like to introduce our um, election chair, Alexander Uzianov. Thank you, Alexander, for helping us. <laughs> Going to, to lead all this stuff, right? And I'm going to help you out. Don't Good worry. evening, fellow Toastmasters. <laughs> Choose or lose. Your, <laughs> Choose. <laughs> your work today will shape the future of your club. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> it will determine who will lead us who will inspire us and who will bring out to, to support huh? support to our club yeah. support to club and um, bring out uh, the best in every and every one of us let's start before we start an action i would like to ask current uh, uh, current president of Toastbusters Club, if we have minimal quorum. Yes, we have enough members here and online audience also. So, uh, elections are legit? Yes. Okay, uh, let's move on the order of today's vote. Today we are voting for all seven positions in uh, Toastmasters leadership. Uh, president, uh, leadership committee. President, Vice President Education, Vice President Membership, Vice President Public Relations, Secretary, Treasurer and Sergeant at Arts. Uh, 
Candidates have been nominated for each position, position and each active member of Toastbusters Club and also be nominated he can nominate the candidacy before the voting starts. Uh, every active toast Toastbuster can be even nominated into two positions. Only one restriction, who take the role of president can be nominated to the role of treasurer. It's a club uh, restriction, it's uh, a spare rule book. And, uh, Every candidate uh, will have uh, from one to two minutes uh, to make his campaign speech before the voting for position starts. Uh, club members vote randomly in club uh, WhatsApp chat, yes? Yes. And uh, yes. through Google Form. Yes, and through Google send. Form. And uh, Ekaterina, current president of Toastbusters, kindly assist me on this. Uh, after uh, I announce the results for each position, the elections for this position are considered valid. So, let's, let's start, start with, yes. from the top committee position, President. It's the person who set the tone for the club, provides helpful, supportive leadership for all of the club's activities, in short, you are responsible for everything. And today, Valeria Bogarelova is applying for this position. Valeria, please welcome to the stage. <laughs> Valeria, tell us why you decided to, <laughs> to become president of the club Toastmasters and for this uh, Toastmasters year and your ambitions on this position you have from one to two well all my life i've been waiting for an opportunity to work for free <laughs> no honestly you guys i love this club <laughs> i'm gonna start crying but i remember the first time that i came to a toastmasters meeting and just like life in cycles, it was Yekaterina Dimova, the first person who greeted me at that very first meeting that I came to as a guest uh, just over a year ago now. And honestly, from that first meeting, I knew I was going to join, even though it took me about two or three months later to actually join. I already knew this was going to be my home. And um, it is. It is my home. I love you guys. I love this club. And I'm honestly not looking to be a leader, you know, be this authoritarian person. But I just want to have more people experience this. More people be able to share who they are, be able to come here and practice the skills they want to practice. Uh, speak English, make friends, do whatever you want to do and create a comfortable environment here. So this is why. I have accepted the invitation to become a president. Uh, so, who else from the active members of Toastbusters Club wants to apply for this position of president for Toastmasters year 23-24? Once again, who else from active Toastbusters club would oh, like to? I knew who was going to right now. Yeah. Right now, can I apply? Irina. No. <laughs> <laughs> Online audience, anyone wants to apply? Yes, Anna. There's Irina. still time. <laughs> Maybe you will. Like Guys, please vote. You can already. I I so? represent. Yeah. Definitely a one-horse race. <laughs> we, so the position is closed. We have only one candidate and we start voting. Yeah, we, we started already, but we have only three, <laughs> three responses right yeah, now. Maybe so we, are, we should wait. The Online audience, please vote. Dear Katya, could you please explain how many options uh, we have for voting? Four. Four, four. against, 
withheld. Vote abst ab ab abst what? Abstain. Abstain. Yeah. Abstain. 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 Maybe. Uh, we will have uh, more votes. Uh, I mean, if we don't have votes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a little bit, right? Maybe everybody will be against. Excuse me! Get out of here! Let's see whatever it is. Yeah. Hey, we already have five votes. Relax. <laughs> no, no, no. Already nine. Just. Uh, George asks where. To what? Through in the WhatsApp chat. It's in WhatsApp. the WhatsApp chat, in the club chat. Yes, we already have nine, uh, <coughs> 11 responses. Can so. you show me the result? Can you show me the result? There are already not believed. Uh, I'm not oh, okay, we have four. result. Yeah. <laughs> I strongly announce uh, Valeria Pagarelova as a new president of those bastards <laughs> for today. <laughs> Just for today. Who has the champagne? <laughs> so, we have a president. We are moving on the next committee position. Vice President Education. Vice President Education. Schedules member speeches and uh, projects and distributes minor roles in some clubs like Toastbusters is and uh, being uh, vice president education you become familiar with all aspects of Toastmasters education program and also you became become source of Toastmasters knowledge for club members and today Daniel Pizlakov is applying for this position. Daniel, please tell us why you decide to become vice president of the it's a very good question, actually. Yeah? <laughs> Some people might actually say that I cut this opportunity because it was offered to many other people and all kind of rejected, but this is not true, right? That's not true, right? God. Well, I'll put the weird yeah. thing. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad to take this position and help you to grow your kind of uh, public speaking skills, and we've got a lot of work to do, I know. Yeah, And I've got some kind of um, uh, personal motivations to do that, and so one of that uh, because before I was the VPM, so I kind of helped some of the people to join and I feel responsible for that. Uh, and actually, to be honest, it was only Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> I feel responsible for you, I cannot leave you now, <laughs> so I'll follow your steps. The other reason actually that a couple of months ago I wanted to take a role and Anna actually told me that, you know, we cannot do that because there is a queue. <laughs> Who can tell me this now? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, right? Okay, so, uh, but to be honest, of course, I understand it's a very important role and uh, actually Anna helped me a lot on my first steps here and I remember that and I yeah, want to kind of help newcomers on the first steps as well. And actually, uh, because it's kind of a nomination speech, right, so I kind of promote myself, I put a list of the things why I can be successful, I forgot the word, successful in that. And one of the reasons is that we actually worked with the president, Valeria, and it turns out that we can work together or at least understand each other for some time. <laughs> and uh, uh, what else? What, 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 are, what are the factors? Already sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course some people may say that I'm uh, not a good candidate because I find some loose t-shirts, but that's obviously not true. I think okay. great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, who else from active members of Toastbusters Club would like to apply for the position of Vice President Education? I will ask twice. Maybe uh, Anna Rubina would like to be nominated for a second period. Anna, would you like to stay at committee to save the club? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, 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 for the for the third time, I've been VP twice. Enough for you. 
<laughs> okay, let's proceed with voting. Yes, we see it was hard yes. to find somebody else. Uh, we are still waiting. Now, ah, uh -huh. okay. Now we have already four. That was fast. That was faster than me, Daniel. What's going on? <laughs> okay. Nobody else was better. No. I shush. Yeah. Congratulations! So, <laughs> so, so, I solely announce Daniel Pizlakov as a new Vice President of Education. <laughs> So what do we have next? Vice President membership. He promotes the club and manage the process of bringing in guests and transforming them into members. Also, Vice President membership tries to keep all members in the club and bring back those who have left long ago. And today, <laughs> Samira Dotstar is applying for this position. Samira. <laughs> Samira. <laughs> Tell us why you decided to become Vice President Membership. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. Um, I have been a member of Toastmasters for more than three years by now. I joined in June 2021. And um, it is not uh, the first time when I'm being elected for club officer's role because in the past um, I was met managing uh, club's finances in the role of uh, treasurer. And this uh, role uh, taught me the importance of each member's contribution, not just uh, in terms of money that you sent me, but also <laughs> <laughs> yes, in terms of participation and engagement. And uh, during that time, I had the opportunity to collaborate with uh, many of you, which was uh, really rewarding. And I really value the uh, help that uh, I'm constantly receiving uh, here in Toastmasters and I would like to um, return back <laughs> this help um, uh, being a Vice President of Membership. I'm very organized, approachable and uh, passionate about Toastmasters community and I think that uh, these qualities make me a suitable candidate for this um, uh, officer's role. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who else guys, from please. Toastmasters Club ah, already? would like to apply for position of oh, such a Vice President membership? Maybe George? <laughs> <laughs> Nikolai also has no like Okay, half against, but still majority. Majority. <laughs> majority is <laughs> four. Samira, I, I solemnly announce Samira Dotstar as new. The Vice President of Membership for Toastbusters Club. <laughs> and what a joke. All was for <laughs> everybody. So, we go to the minor president or secretary. VPPR. 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 <laughs> we have next uh, smoothly move to the position Vice President Public Relations, who promote the club to the local community and notify the media and various key places on the web about the club existence and its benefits. And you will find being uh, with President uh, Public Relations, you will find yourself writing, writing news releases and you will work like a real journalist. 
So. Александр Баранов. Vice President Public Relations. Alexander, tell us why you decided okay. to become. I decided because I was asked by friends. <laughs> In fact, I didn't know that I need to prepare some pitch, um, but I have to say something about this. Actually, this role is quite interesting for me because it's uh, really a development. I don't like very much the social media or and, uh, social uh, networks and don't use them myself so much. But it, this is a step forward for me and a new skill. So I readily will do it and I think I could even like it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great development and maybe uh, this will be a good, good skill for my own life. And I want to be a part of the club, I want to be integrated more, not just participate in the meetings. So this, uh, this, is, this will be a pleasure for me. Fellow Dostbusters, who else would like to become Vice President Relation public. Relation public. Public, public, relations. public relations for, for coming Toastmasters year. Maybe Miles. <laughs> Maybe we have Thank you. So we have twelve response and responses. I responses. I announce <sighs> I announce Alexander Baranov. Congratulations. And we're looking forward to your first social media post tomorrow. <laughs> Announcing your new <laughs> position. Yeah. So finally, secretary. Secretary maintains all clubs records, manage club files, handle club correspondence, and keeps reports of all club affairs and keeps all club secrets. <laughs> Please tell us why you decided to become secretary second time, yes? Think so, yeah. Some time ago my friend who has been to our club a few times asked me, Tanya What's behind your long membership with the Toastmasters? What keeps you here? I said, you know what? The idea of the Toastmaster is to develop public speaking and um, leadership skills. And being uh, a member for a long, long time, I see no progress in that, in any of this. But suddenly, at a certain point, I realized that I became almost 100% resistant to all kinds of criticism. And I used to be very sensitive about it. And I think that's all because of the Toastmasters. She said, you know what? From a professional point of view, the last point you mentioned worth a lot more than two previous ones. I said, okay. I'm getting a professional piece of advice from a psychologist for free from the bottom of her heart. And with a good meaning, that means I'm doing the right thing, right? Okay, and how that story is related to your secretary position, you might be desperate. <laughs> it's directly related to all officers' position, I have to tell you. For instance, you can develop, you can discover your hidden talents, you can polish a skill you were not even aware of that you have it. And like for, for like secretary can master accuracy literacy, punctuality, and many, many more. And uh, I promise you guys to be a good secretary for the next term. And if any of you, especially junior members of our club, want to try it, please come to me, approach me, and I will give you more details. And if you want to criticize me, feel free to do so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, Fellow Toastbusters, who else would like to apply for this position? Maybe Samira would like to have two positions. Yeah. <laughs> you still can. 
After that campaign, do you think anybody is going to stand a chance? Ooh. That was amazing. I should try it. <laughs> Dear Katya, do we have results? Yeah, just one more. We need. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh huh. Ten response. Okay. Yes. So it's enough. Right. Plus one. More than. Ten. It's... I no announce Tatiana Gladyshova. New secretary for Toastbusters Club. <laughs> Thank you. Finally, we. No, two more minutes. There's trash red right 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 I know. <laughs> Finally, we got to the most interesting part <laughs> the competition. Because for treasure. Treasurer, it's club accountant, manage the club bank account, writing checks and depositing dues and other club revenues. In short, where money is, there is always competition. And I was today, we have two candidates for the position. Yekaterina Sulakova and Alexandra Fedorenko, current president. Екатерина Дымова told me that Екатерина Шолакова, despite she was not here, she still participating and Валерия Погорела will introduce his her her campaign speech on her behalf. Yes. So we will start from Valeria Pagarelova on behalf of Ekaterina Shulakov. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I'm actually the current treasurer and Ekaterina reached out to me um, specifically to ask if she can be part of the committee, if she can be part of the officers. And she showed a lot of interest and in wanting not just to be a treasurer, but in the future to participate in other roles. We all know life is unpredictable. Unfortunately, circumstances, um, because of circumstances, she cannot be here today. And that is why I am presenting her. She, I don't know, do many of you know who Yekaterina Shulakova is? Show of hands, show of hands people who know. Okay, we'll go some, cool. some, yeah. okay, perfect. She is a new member and it's always good to have fresh blood on the team. Oh. <laughs> and it's not as bad as it sounds, but I personally would advocate for her because she shows enthusiasm, she shows initiative and she shows uh, desire for this particular role. And she was actually one of the few people who wasn't asked to be uh, part of the officers committee. She asked us if she can be part of the officers committee. So that is my introduction. Thank you. And we have another candidate, Alexandra Fedorenko. Alexandra? Okay. Whoa. Alexandra, please tell us why you decided to apply for this position of treasurer. Hi guys, it is quite difficult to say now why I decided to do that after such a wonderful vouching for Ekaterina, but let's the uh, best treasurer, future treasurer win. Anyways, I have a horrible memory, so I don't really remember if I was uh, asking to be, or I was asked to be a treasurer. Maybe, maybe someone else remembers. However, since I do have quite a horrible memory, I am an amazing person with great knowledge of Excel. And I do know quite many formulas. And you know what? Uh, I do know some things in investments, so I can actually invest some money and probably earn some more for our members. And speaking of fresh blood, uh, okay, my blood is not that fresh. I know that. <laughs> However, uh, I've never been a member of the Secretariat. And uh, for years of being a member of Toastmasters, I've been saying something like, nah, you know what? I'm not ready. And, uh, you know, I am ready now. 
And the fresh blood probably needs to mature a little bit. So please vote for me. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll excuse you. Let me see. Thank you very much, Alexandra. And now I would like to ask. No, we have only six responses. Please. I would like to ask active members from Toastbusters Club who else would like to apply for position of treasurer for coming uh, Toastmasters year 23-24. Maybe. Irina Gurtava. 24, 25, maybe? No. 24, 24, 20, 24. Already 24, yes. 24, 25. Okay. 23. 24. Oh, it was past, present, future, oh, today. Yeah. So, <laughs> so. So, Okay. Uh, we have results and uh, uh, we have. Uh, the majority decision and I know uh, I know Yekaterina Sholakova as a new treasurer for Toastbusters Club. Yes, ah, I can shake your hand. Thank you, Alexandra, for stepping in. Step it up. And last but not the least, Surgeon at Arms. As Surgeon at Arms, you keep track of the club physical property, such as a banner, lectern timing device, and other meeting materials. You arrive early to prepare the meeting place for members, and you stay late to store all the club's equipment. You are also in charge to the meeting place itself, obtaining your space when necessary, and making contact with the people who allow you to use space in your club meetings, Your Majesty. <laughs> and today, today, Andrei Kiselev is applying for this position. Andrei, tell us why you <coughs> decide to become Sergeant at Arms at Toastbuster Club for coming to uh, Toastmasters year 24-25. It's not about me, it's about our club. Uh, if you don't make a choice, uh, you lose. <laughs> you will lose in your future, you lose today, in your present. Yes. Um, now, past. now the hour has come and that will decide the fate of uh, our club. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you uh, also have to know uh, that uh, you are uh, all the public speaking stars here. <laughs> yes. Uh, of course, I will not uh, tell you why I want to become a surgeon. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know as well uh, as I do uh, that I fit perfectly. Yeah, yes. uh, I swear to uh, fulfill uh, my duties as a surgeon, and uh, I will uh, punish. Uh, Mm, troublemakers uh, at uh, all uh, <laughs> community events How? and uh, you are very lucky that uh, uh, next uh, Toast uh, Busters year uh, you will get the best surgeon of the history of the Toastmaster history yes and uh, please take your fingers tap the screen and vote, vote for me. Oh, yes. thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Andrei. Yeah. Great collect. And maybe someone from active Toastbusters uh, members would like to apply for the same position. I, I can see. <laughs> <laughs>
фотку поставил. О, вы хотите. Я не уж не успела. I know. Андрей Киселев. Silence, please. I solemnly announce Andrei Kiselov as new surgeon for Toastbusters Club, the best surgeon. Okay. Here we have the whole, the whole committee. And I would like to thank uh, all Toastbusters for taking the time and to be here today and make your voice heard. I want to also thank all the candidates who stepped up and uh, put their names forward for these important leadership roles. Also, I would like to thank outgoing officers uh, for your dedicated service and congratulations once again to newly elected officers. Let's give a round of applause. Elections are officially over. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you so much. I'm going to the So, first of all, let's take a photo yeah, of new committee. Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Uh, guys, new committee, please join me on stage. I'm not a new officer. So, uh, Alexander, Valeria Pogorelova, Daniel Pujlakov, Samira Dosta, Andrei Kiselev. Боже, я безумно красивый, я сам Да, иди сюда, фоткаем новый комитет. Даня. Даня. And I would like to ask all of you, I mean Valeria Pogorelova, Irina Gurtavaya, Tatiana Gladyshova, Daniel Pizhlakov, come on stage. I would like to come on stage. Oh, the yeah, I just would like to express it because it's a team job. Yeah, it's a team.
And who is the winner? What do you think? The winner of the Halo Pocket Session. And the winner of the Halo Pocket Session. Oh, we have two winners. Miles. Miles, you are the one. Yeah. And uh, Valeria Pogarelova. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, Miles. Yeah, Miles. Congratulations, Miles. Yeah, 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 Miles. Again, thank you everybody who, who were here tonight and uh, thank you all my team and uh, good luck to a new team. <laughs> and uh, our next meeting will be held here in two weeks, 19th of June. Mark, please join us again next time if you have if, if you have chance, I hope so. right? Um, and uh, basically, ah, <laughs> of course, after party we will have as usual. We usually go into, uh, in some bar, and let's make a photo, right? Yeah. Guys, can I just say the English language level is getting really good. <laughs> no, it's getting really good. From my last time that I came, the same people talking. You know, your English has improved. You, yeah, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, thank you, my on stage, because I'm stage, guys, to make four time. Yeah. I almost Anya, George, is it possible to Yes, we turn your camera. camera. Yeah, yeah, Телевизор тоже должен войти. Все, улыбаемся, все прекрасно. Еще раз. Хотите подпрыгнуть? Everyone say Gorgonzola. Gorgonzola. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Bye. Miles, thank you for joining us today. Anna and George, thank you so much. Yeah, see you. Bye. See you next time. Bye. See you next time. Yeah, bye.